Isfahan as the new capital of Iran experienced an outstanding moment of artistic creativity some 400 years ago. Innovative art developed between royal patronage and urban consumption, between global connections and local inspiration. This is a short story of a unique artistic city and time. The gardens of Isfahan played an important role for the intersection of space, object and society. In addition to his own palace gardens, Shah Abbas had commissioned a two-kilometer-long boulevard with watercourses, fountains, coffee houses and gardens on both sides. Along the street, garden pavilions were built, which provide space for gatherings of the high society. Unfortunately, only two of these pavilions have survived. Lavishly decorated from the inside, tiles were often used to ornament the exterior. Some tile panels show previously unknown genre scenes by way of fashionably dressed young men and women, many of them at picnics and gardens. Do these scenes allow us to get a glimpse of people and culture during these times? These images were all over. Wall paintings in palaces, houses or book paintings, as well on objects, repeated the depiction of lascivious women and men in picnic scenes. And, like hipsters and dandies of our time, they mark distinct social statuses and an overall different belonging from the common. The young fashionable men with soft features look almost female and play with gender roles. Women and men, courtesans and love boys, spread a sensual atmosphere with homoerotic and erotic undertones. Borders of the public moral begins to shift in these scenes. The style of the 17th century happened in times of strong social change and the rise of new urban elites. During bloody campaigns, Armenians, Circassians and Georgians had been settled to Isfahan and forced into the service of the Shah. They became the core of a new state elite. People of every ethnic background came to the city. Quite frequent were Indians and exotic Europeans. The city became diverse and a melting pot of new inspirations from all over. The famous tradition of Persian miniature painting adapted to the changing taste. The painting school no longer relied on illustrated monographs, but on single sheets that were collected in albums. Individual studies of people, plants, or standardized motifs, such as the well-known garden scenes, were well sold. Dutch and English painters who came to Isfahan set new accents for painting tradition. European prints were sold in the main bazaar. The first Iranian nude paintings appeared as well. Poets, calligraphers and painters roamed the new cafes and sold their works. Tobacco and coffee were new commodities that had just been introduced, which inspired tastes, smells and designs. Water pipes and coffee cups came onto the market. Plates, cups, vases and bowls have been preserved by the thousands. Ceramic masters took up techniques and innovatively developed the finest objects. These bowls and bottles appear prominently in garden scenes, especially in blue and white vessels. China was chic. Local taste was connected to global change and exchange. The end of the Ming Dynasty and of the famous Ming porcelain in 1644 was caused by climate change, known as the Little Ice Age, inflation and civil war. Global crises created local opportunities. Iranian ceramic workshops copied Chinese porcelain for the Iranian and international markets. Fakes. The backs are marked with fictitious Chinese pottery marks and were exported by the thousands to Europe. Objects were on the move. Persian carpets were in high demand. A special type of fine silk carpets called polonaise were commissioned by the Polish royal family, but knotted in Iran. Similar, the so-called Portuguese carpets and textiles that depict Portuguese boats. Other very special silk carpets from Kashan with gold and silver threads traveled widely. One of these exquisite works found its way to Japan for a famous samurai. Others came to the royal family in Munich or Paris. 
The Armenian silk network was by definition global and traded the finest Persian silk textiles, which were appreciated widely. But it was precisely this global network that put an end to this artistic bloom of the 17th century. Global economic routes started to bypass Iran. Imperial vision, social change, and global exchange had led to a dramatic and energetic artistic development in Isfahan. What remained was the memory of that special time, carried by its objects and buildings. Today, the bazaars are still full of finely crafted wares, echoing the past. Art and handcrafted works are produced directly on site or in quarters attached to it. Miniature painters, enamel art, fabric printers and wooden mosaics are now prepared for customers today. Everyone can take a piece of Isfahan back home to recall this unique artistic city. What would be your memory and object that you would take home?